Welcome back, everybody, to the latest episode of the Firestorm Podcast. We are bringing you the one and only, the classic album review. We're good at that. We do a lot of that. and um, we, do, we do like that around here. Yes, this time around, we have Nate Wants to Battle's I want to say highly anticipated new album. There's, there is a lot of hype about it. It came out a month mm. early because of the hype about it. Uh, to Let Go is an original album. Uh, yeah, first so, one first, since, what, 2018? Yeah, Paid Exposure. Because yeah. um, we've had a lot of uh, other albums like covering all of Nate's bases. We've had fucking the Five Nights at Freddy's Ultimate Collection. We've got the Gotta Go Fast and the deluxe version of Gotta Go Fast. And then we've had What You Want. Um, mm-hmm. uh, fuck, the latest one, I don't remember. If it had the final FNAF songs on the Scrap Heap, Scrap Heap, that's what it was. Yeah. Oh, I was about to say the Triple Ultimate Collection or some shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, that. Something yeah. like that, yeah. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Nate has been gone for a little bit. Nate's been out of the picture. He's been making this yeah. album. And he said, I- I'm done making music based on other IPs. I want to make original music. Admittedly, mm-hmm. then he made a song on Legend of Zelda. Uh, yeah, Tartans and then Tears of the, Tears of the, Kingdom. the Kingdom dropped. But, you know, we'll, we'll can, forgive him for that. Yeah, who can blame him? Who can blame him? So, um, yeah. yeah, we are now here for To Let Go. And I am keen. I yes. feel I, like... You know what? I've always liked uh, Nate's original albums. Um, mm-hmm. I've mentioned this a gazillion times, but Nate was one of the, the musicians who first got me into making music. And even though I don't really listen to his stuff like at all, or even like much at all anymore, he's still a very, very strong musician. Mm-hmm. And he's very good at what he does. So I'm hoping that this is a return to form, because I haven't really been super into like i wasn't super into scrap heap or anything uh but you know i did like some of the songs on there so i'm hoping that this is but i i still really like sandcastle kingdoms and paid exposure yes so i hope this is very very good as well sandcastle we'll sandcastle kingdoms is still one of my favorite albums and yeah going back to nay being a strong influence for you i've mentioned it a dozen times as well more than a dozen times it is how I found Gus by looking up Nate Wants to Battle Instrumental. Yes. And yep. that is how we are here today. So it, it almost feels like we need to do this. Because mm-hmm. it, you're right. This is almost a return to form because he's been gone for a while. He's made this album. And despite the fact the name is to let go, I do feel like this is just a new step in the story uh, of Nate Wants to Battle. Whether he continues with Nate Wants to Battle after this. We will shit, we will see. Um, but yeah, no, it is... And we will shit ourselves. Yeah, it, it is going to be very, very good. I'm very, very excited. Um, we didn't cover cra- uh, Scrap Heap. We covered... I never said Crap Heap, but that's that's not what the album is Crap called. Heap. Um, we've we've uh, done the Thanks for More Covers album. We've talked about What You Want. We've reviewed those. And um, mm-hmm. I did a review of all these FNAF songs, like a tier list thing with two of my friends on my channel. We cover the Scrap Heap songs there. Um, and yeah, nine songs, 31 minutes in length. Bit of a smaller album, but regardless, I'm hyped when you are. I'm ready when you are. There's a few explicit songs. He uses the, the bad words, but he doesn't do that a lot. Guys. Guys, he says the fuck word. Oh my god. Kids, ask your parents before listening and watching this video. Um, Explicit okay. content. Uh, parental guidance may be advised. Yeah, parent, parental guidance is advised. And if if you are under the age of 18 listening to this album, frankly, you're irresponsible. Yeah. Uh, Get off the internet. Yeah, wh- yeah exactly. Especially get off Twitter, you fucking oh, fucking nerds. Anyway, uh, real 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 the, real real youngsters nowadays don't even know that it was called Twitter. They only know X. <laughs> so I honestly have not stopped calling it Twitter. I re- I just I don't care. Um, yeah. Nah. The <laughs> um, anyway, if y'all don't know how this works by now, 
Um, well, I'm sure you'll figure it out. Uh, we we, so, we we absorb the essence of all of our like of all of our neighbors, and we um, listen to all the music to the sounds of that screaming, and you listen yep. to it through the sounds of other fucking music programs because you know we can't play the songs, guys. You should know this. Yeah. Fuck's sake. Yes, we can't play the songs, so you're gonna have we to play did them it, we with already us did it with somewhere Gus's else. Album. Gus's album was the only exception. Yep. Anyway. Yep. That's because <laughs> I allowed it to happen. I have the copyright. <laughs> Thank you, Gus. Yeah. It. yeah exactly. We should we should legitimately just out like for a random album, just approach the artist and go, "Hey, if we review this, can you let us play the music?" <laughs> like, just I don't care who. We just need to approach someone and see if we can make that happen. That'll be funny. Yeah. All right. Message like message like Benjamin Burnley, like, "Hey, man." Listen, <laughs> look, you're breaking Benjamin. We man. have this like, channel with we have this channel with 150 subscribers, dude. Uh, we can get you some real, real yeah. intense views, viewership, man. We're, yeah. we're hitting that oh. market of like 18 to 20 year olds, maybe. I don't know uh-huh. actually. Who I think, knows? I think we have a viewer from South Africa, like one. That kind of rules. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, all right. let's stop yeah. stalling. My throat hurts. Let's get into this. Okay. Cool. Let's let's start. All right. So track number one is called Socio Envy, which sounds edgy and hopefully is too. Uh, all right. We're gonna start it in three, two, one, go. This is Welcome to the Black Parade. It begins. Oh, we haven't heard any of these, by the way. They were singles, but we haven't heard them yet. Yeah, no, I haven't listened to any. Yeah, so this is all new for us. It's been 30 seconds. Is that what you call your penis? <laughs> Damn. Damn. <laughs> Wish I could unearth my thunder. <laughs> Sorry. I I had one of my friends who I did Bro that, is disassociated. With, that, that tier list with loves the sort of music. I know this would be one of their favorites. Just, I know immediately this is their jam. This depressing shit. Man, this is edgy. I. Oh. Jesus. Jump scare. <laughs> I thought he was done making Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. What the fuck was that? What the fuck? I just got jump scared. His penis. <laughs> Rotten note right there. Wowee. Um. Aha. Uh-huh. That was. Cool. Uh, 
that there it's huh. it's difficult to comment on a song like that because yeah it's it is it's strange it's a nine track album and yet it that felt like an intro for yes the album. agreed so like yeah which spot on. In, intro songs are fine i get that for nine tracks though yep. it makes it feel like there's less to be held within the whole album but yeah the vibe I get, and he's been talking about this for a while, like, it was a very prominent part of Scrap Heap as well. Like, the final song was literally barely about Five Nights at Freddy's. It was about how he wants to... He's sick of making not, making things for the numbers, and he wants to just do things for himself, but, that does no, but that's never rewarding. Like, it's never... Like, you can't make a living off that almost because it doesn't get as many numbers as the rest, mm. and he's sick of looking at the numbers. I get that. I get the vibe of that. Yep. It's, yeah. Personally, it's just not a song for me because half of it, yeah, well, half, half of it was just poetry of, like, mm. I, I would read that in, a, like, a poetry sort of sense, like, those lyrics... Like, as a song, it was not much, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I do like the the idea that it's sort of like an intro song, because that's really what it felt like. And I, I like the vibe that he went for with, like, the first two minutes or whatever. Um, or whatever, whatever it was, first minute and 45, I don't remember. But whenever yeah. before whenever I got jump scared, and... It was it was a nice chill vibe and a little bit depressing. Like it was, it almost felt like something you could just switch your brain off and listen to or something. Like when you're just genuinely feeling depressed, almost. Yeah. Um, it, that's kind of like what I would associate that with. But yeah, I don't think that's something I'll come back to. But I, I appreciate the sentiment behind it as well because the. I want to be able to like empathize with that whole situation where he's like got in into this rhythm where he is doing what he loves, but only in a way that will appease the fans and it's not doing what he wants to do personally. Um, because like I'm for me, I'm lucky enough to have that crossover, but that you know that's not the case for everyone like of course you can't you don't want to do a gazillion stuff the songs about five nights at freddy's you know mm -hmm. like that's i feel that would definitely get old fast and, and it's not even that it's so, like, it, it, it's so it, you can so quickly lose your passion for that sort of thing but that's yeah. the only thing that garners attention and that mm -hmm. would feel very disheartening when it's like hey guys i have all this other stuff why don't you listen to this other stuff? And then they don't. Yeah. Like, I, I, yeah. YouTube is just a shithole like that. It really is. Like, there's just mm -hmm. so many people, like, chil like children, like, actual children who are just, like, so single-minded about that kind of thing. Uh, it's, it's really unfortunate. I, I, I do think, like, maybe it was a bit of an overreaction on his part, because I do think there was quite a bit of support, for, especially for his original albums, like, when they came out. Like, a surprising amount of support. Like, I feel like most people's original albums from when they, like, transfer over from, like, doing fandom stuff, a lot of people's original albums would actually do really shittily. But, like, both Sandcastle Kingdoms and Paid and Exposure, I think, performed pretty well, like, as far as I know. Um, like, they were no slouches at all. So, I I don't know. It, I, think it's, I, I definitely I think, it's... think it's frustrating... Like, to see there's so many people, like, there's so, there are probably a larger chunk of his fans that only listen to the Five Nights at Freddy's stuff. And when you yeah. see those kind of comments, give us more Five Nights at Freddy's, whatever, et cetera, et cetera, it's very disheartening. Like, yeah. that's probably what it is. You know, it's not, the, the bad comments always outweigh the good ones. I was, so, I was about to say, like, despite the massive amount of praise and attention that the two originals would have gotten, I can imagine three times as many numbers of people just demanding 
Hey, can you make a Bendy and the Machine song? Hey, can you make a FNAF song? Hey, can you make a DDLC song? Like, and that's yeah. what What You Want was based on. And then it just mm-hmm. kept happening. So I, mm-hmm. I, I get I get entirely what that message is across. But I feel like we're getting ahead of ourselves. I feel like a lot of this album Probably. is going to cover uh, this sort of thing. But yeah, as a song... Definitely just an intro for the album, I feel like, and a good uh, a good vibe to get you in Nate's headspace. I mm-hmm. think that's... I read the lyrics while that was going along, and I was like, okay, I think I get the headspace now. Let's see what the rest of the album has to offer. Has to offer. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, so moving on. <clears throat> there we go. Um, track number two is called Without a Cure. We're going to play it in three, two, one, go. Yeah, the first song was definitely the intro, because that led perfectly into this. Yeah, it did. Don't do drugs, kids. What does this remind me of? I like this. I like this vibe. Very heavily tuned guitars. Lots of effects. But I like it. Man, there's a band that this reminds me of, and I just can't put my finger on it. Hmm. Yeah, I am getting vibes of something else, of a different artist. I just can't match it right now. No, I yeah, I'm exactly the same. I just can't put my finger on it. This is this is nice though. I do like the vibe. Ooh. Quiet time. He's really loving the effects and just the sounds, like, less less instruments, more just effects. The chorus again? It's a little disappointing. Shared my name for worse or for better. What is he saying? Uh, you you know you you know the lyrics. You just don't know what he's saying. Is that right? No, no, like I, I, I that, that chorus was. I I know the chorus lyrics, but. That that extra part in the second half there, I didn't... Don't come crawling back to me again, you know I'm a sucker for your mess. That's what that was. What does that mean? Yeah, I'm... I feel like there was almost, like, okay... Uh, the whole thing about, like, you shared my name for worse or for better. Cool lyrics. I uh, like And the chorus as well. Very catchy. 
I'm just trying to think. Like, it definitely felt like there was a target of that song. I just don't know what. Like, I don't know if that if it was the fans or if it was someone in particular or like. Could I, it have it, been? Can, this was a this was a deep deep lore cut, but could it have? Could it have been Christina? I don't know, man. I don't know any like. See, okay, I kind of feel bad. One of our first album reviews we did for Nate's song, I think it was Thanks for More Covers, he actually responded and said thank you for the review. Yeah. And, like, so I feel bad talking about him in his personal life because there's always that yeah, thought of, like, I... oh, he might, he might see this. Um, I don't know how poorly their relationship ended. I don't know if there's any bad blood between the two. So I don't know if I, there would be... It didn't any... seem like there was, but... There was nothing public. So I don't know if there yes. is necessarily a need for a song targeted at Christina. I, yeah. I don't believe there is any cause for that. But it, it, it's it could just be sharing the theme, like it, like this could just be more about like the the YouTube thing again. But I'm yeah. not really sure because I don't know. It, 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 that's the thing, like especially with social media and everything, like. Um, don't come crawling back to me, you know, um, so what was it like, you know, I love to mess with something. Uh, I, I, I don't said, remember. I literally said it a minute ago. Um, it's almost like that vibe of like, it's hard to quit social media and because like it's a train wreck and it makes you feel depressed. It makes you feel shit, but yet people always come back to it. It's one of those addicting things and perhaps it's targeting that because I know and, and like, YouTube especially, I know a lot of people, like myself included, you, you upload something, it gets a fuck ton of views. You get that dopamine rush of like, oh yes, let's fucking go, lads. And like, that's just, it, it's almost like a bad drug because it, at the end of the day, those numbers don't really mean a lot if you, in the grand scheme of things. So right, I, I'm not entirely sure. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting. But besides messages and whatnot ah i do like that song i liked the sound and the vibe that's definitely uh a bop in the car driving down the highway like bass boosted fucking that is definitely one of those songs and i Mm. really enjoyed the vibe of that i was a little disappointed that it just ended with the chorus again i kind of thought there would be a little bit more of the bridge but because that chorus felt a little bit repetitive towards the end, but it was fun. Very fun song. So I won't complain too much. Um, yeah, that's... Uh, that should be a bit. So we can move on. Track number three is called Ghost Town. Mm-hmm. And we're going to play that's, it. That's my, my comment section. Um. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah. uh, our, our comment our, section is true anyway, true sorry. that is that's that's true um uh except for, <laughs> never mind no, uh, no, i'm no, not gonna don't, say, don't say it don't yep say it, don't say it, don't say it. i'm not gonna say anything right. the we're gonna <coughs> play track number three in three two one go This is another vibe. This is nice. 
It almost kind of feels like a sequel to like Live Long Enough to Be the Hero or something, or one of those songs. Hmm. Bruh, that's fucking for real. I'm on the edge of my seat. What's he trying to be? He just wants to be Nate. (sighs) And that's good enough. He is Ken. All right. He is Ken. (laughs) He's Nate. uh, Whatever. Ken. Ken. Why was this slide was explicit? I don't think I heard him swear. Uh. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that, was, um, that, was a, that was a nice vibe. Like, despite the lyrics. Like, what he was saying. That was a nice vibe. That was catchy. Agreed. Um, the... He has... I don't know when it started exactly, but he has been good at, for the last few years, been good at this, like, almost post malone style of, like, integrating that sort of, like, lighter feeling, uh, the, the, the nice, vibey sort of uh, hip-hop almost into his rock music. It, it, Manipulate is another good example of that. It's yeah. like he's been very good at like that sort of style uh, and he does a great job with it. And that's another example of that. It That one almost went in more of a rock direction as well. But he like stylistically with like the how he chose to write the the lyrics and the vocal melodies, it, it just it worked. It was catchy. It was uh, very like um Nice and like reverby, didn't feel too heavy, uh, in the mix. That was good. That that was mm-hmm. the the best one so far for sure. Yes, I I'm inclined to agree, and I promise I will not overanalyze every single song. But straight yeah, up, yeah, I don't, I didn't, I don't read the lyrics, so you're the only one that's got the lyrics. I, I didn't read the lyrics to that either, but to me, that was straight up. Like, cause like, like we we've done this before. Like, see. Normally, I'd listen to the instrumental and then and you pay attention to the lyrics, but I feel like we've kind of yeah. switched this time because mm-hmm. that to me was straight up. Hey, look, I was appreciative and I liked being like looked up to when I was growing my channel, growing as um, like a significant person because like I liked being that reach out for people because you, you, you hear the stories all the time, like. It doesn't matter what creator, like any big creator, like you meet, they will always get comments saying, "Oh, your content saved me," or something like that. Like, just in any sort of scenario, it doesn't matter who you are. Mm. And I feel like Nate probably got some of that with his music. Music tends to make people feel that way, and now he's reached a point where he still cares, but he he feels like he's lost more and longer. Way. like that's the whole thing i used to have a lot of friends but now i'm a ghost town because mm. friends sometimes only use you when you get big and like, yeah you find out they're not really your friends 
and yeah now he's almost the one that just wants to step away and be the one that looks up to others and gets help but people are still mm-hmm. looking up to him and expecting that of him and he's almost done with that it's been years that's the vibe I got I really got that from the lyrics but anyway I need to stop doing that but I, it, fuck it vibes you know vibes it was a good vibe I like that um, mm-hmm. and I'm keen for the next one just because it's got it, it's, it's it's all funky look at that it's got a one in there holy oh. shit um, okay yeah the uh, track number four is called Viral but it's V-1-R-L. spelled V L. yeah spelled like that um, very edgy alright so we're gonna play that one in three two one go Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, YouTube. Woo! Woohoo! I like the build. It's just constantly building and nothing repeating yet. It's good. Keep it going. Yeah. Nice. Oh, that was edgy. Well done. Holy shit. Yeah, do the breakdown again. Cool. That was cool. Wow. It was, uh, it, How edgy. He definitely he broke up broke up the rhythm there. Like immediately mm. with the intro and then it didn't dead silent for just a second and then they're getting back into it like immediately it's putting you off pace and it's on purpose and that ending as well not ending with the last chorus instead just yep. break just going into a breakdown like yeah that that, that was good and I, I think there was another message there and I like that as well and I, mm-hmm. I probably my like 
uh, not one I'd necessarily come back to, but I get the vibe, and I do think that was cool. He he is definitely incorporating just a lot more effects. Like I, I don't know what the terminology is in regards to music, but like I feel like there's less instruments at play, and it's more just adding in effects and messing with them. Like, yeah. Well, it, yeah, it's, it's they're SFX, yeah. They're, it's just effects is fine. Um, so, yeah, I agree. I think compositionally that might have been the strongest one so far just because it was different and it was it kept you on your toes. The, the lyrics I actually thought were quite good for that one as well. Um, I like, like the it, he, he, yeah, he expressed... I think he, the way he expressed himself there with like the the topic and the way he got it across the like his his word choice strong um yeah i agree like it's a, probably a little bit on the edgy side for me i mean I, I definitely appreciate edgy stuff but it's that one's almost like a different kind of edgy like that one's just straight up resentment almost and it's like not even almost it is resentment and like it but it was good. Like, again, I think that might have been the strongest one so far, um, uh, song-wise, just overall. I feel uh, like this album is going to, like, hit all the different stages of grief. Like, it's almost <laughs> kind of like, that's, that's, that's the vibe. That, that one was what? Like... I don't know the stage pure, of grief. <laughs> almost, that was pure anger. Like, it was resentment. You're right. Like, I don't know. I, I, keep going, but I know. What yeah, about. well, the... Um, yeah, no, it was just it, that was that was solid. Like it is um the yeah, it, I don't even know. I thought I was going to say something and then I forgot what it was. Uh but yeah, no, it was just it's sort of like the I think you can definitely the get caught up in like the never-ending spiral of like feeling the need to have your stuff perform, have your content perform well as a creator and feeling, I guess, I don't know the right word, but like just, just feeling in like, like you're not enough, maybe something around, around that, like of if you can't, if your content consistently doesn't perform well, um, or at least, you know, maybe compared to some, some of the other stuff, like some stuff, like very rarely your stuff does well, and then every other st- everything else is just like shitty, performing really bad in comparison. But um, it's just yeah. that mindset that the social media, just every social media, can get you into, especially when you have a a big platform. Um, it's a very toxic thing, uh, and it's it's unfortunate that people get caught up in that, but. Maybe well, one, one with thing, this song, they can vent I, their I, anger. I would, one thing I would appreciate, on Nate's behalf, I've uh, tuned into a few of his live streams occasionally, because he streams at really odd times of the day, considering he's in America. Um, but it's always, like, right in the middle of the day for me, so, like, I can tune in. Um, so I've tuned into a few of them, and at the very least... The people that tune into his live streams are all very, like, understanding, and none of them are, like, none of them are, like, annoying kids. None of them are just spamming, yeah. where's the next, none, none, of them, none of them are doing that. All of them are there for him streaming, which is probably goes hand in hand with the fact he's done stuff like that before with uh, Dookie, you talking about? Like, he's, yeah. I used to love Nate and Dookie. Yeah. Yeah, like, he's done funny content before, so people are are used to that. So it's good. Like, but yeah, the the whole, the whole concept of going viral for one reason or another, like, it ultimately doesn't benefit anyone. And I feel like that, yeah, like, he must, he must have been stuck, like, to make this album, he must have, been stuck in a place for a long time where it was nothing but numbers, nothing but building, and like this. Okay, if this works. This is the way to get to the career aspirations I want. And then after a while, he finally realized, oh no, that's hmm. that, that, that's nothing to do with it. And look, 
later on, there's even a song that says a lesson in grief. I, I brought this up. The five stages of grief. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. I feel like... I don't know. I feel like that was just anger. We might get to bargaining soon. I don't know. T- but we'll see what Too Late Go has to has in store. The title song, midway through the album. Interesting mm-hmm. choice. Keen for it. I like it. Also uh, the longest song. Nice. Yes. Yeah, it is. Um, okay. So, yeah. We'll, uh, the Yeah, track number five. It's called To Let Go. We're playing in three, two, one, go. Uh, this is the song he used for the YouTube shorts promoting that. I've heard 10 seconds of this song and that's it. Hell yeah. This is like Linkin Park almost. I like it. Mmm. Let's go. Hmm. Let's go. Damn. Cut the music out, bruh. How far on the edge are you right now, Gus? Dude, I'm so... I'm, I'm like, fucking dangling. Like, I got two fingers left holding on the edge right now. Bruh. So much only edge. Halfway through, only halfway through the album, bruh. Why not? I've never counted how long I can breathe without underwater. Holy shit. What? The edge. 
edge on that, man. Man. My God. Good Lord. That you want to know was, was really untethered. The edge. Whew. You know, yeah, that was that was very uh, deserving of being the title track for the album because I feel like that as a whole is just the perfect blend of Nate's iconic style and the message this album as a whole is trying to contain. Like, if he didn't release... Right. If he didn't want to make a whole album and he just wanted to make a song containing all of his thoughts, I feel like that perfectly summarized it. And like a lot of good musicians that make music about other topics, like you, Nate, Divine Music, a few people I can just think of off the top of my head, having comparisons to real-life situations that can also work in a different sense, like for him being online, like, I or mm-hmm. why can't you fucking leave me be? Like, that can be the same for a toxic partner as it can be for obsessive fans. Yeah, it's very good parallels. So, yep. Very good. That's a lot of what I imagine Nate fans expect. When, like, especially, well, well, for me, that's the type of style I expect. But that definitely a bit more edgy compared to the rest. But, yeah. I, I, I appreciated that. That was good. Yeah, I agree. That was, I think that might be my favorite so far. That, like you said, it was, that was a return to form. Like, that's yeah. the, um... Uh, it was it, it's definitely heavier than what i was than like his original stuff before this like from i mean say, you know unless you're counting the five minutes of freddy stuff but like the for saying castle kingdoms and pain exposure that was a little he went he went harder on that for sure and like but everything from the the guitar work in that track was exquisite um that was great and the um the when he held i, I want to say it was a c i don't know uh exactly what note it was but that high note that he kept hitting a bunch uh and held with like that grit very nice uh and he he fucking nailed that every single time and he probably didn't exactly nail it i know how it is but like you know he you get close if you get close enough it's good enough um the uh it, but yeah very good i'm it's like the the way it was put together i i like the, the transitions between the lighter floaty uh verses into that uh very heavy chorus um good good stuff that that bridge also was really nice i like the chain like how he changed up the chorus a little bit and then went into a bridge uh good stuff very solid mm. uh i i think yeah, that's up there with the best, like, again, with compositionally, I think that's one of the best ones so far. In a different way from from viral, viral, viral. V1 roll, that I, one. I'm still kind of, like, I'm picking between it and Ghost Town for my favorites so far, but that, that yeah, that, that was very cool. Very mm-hmm. cool. Like, you know me, I love my Edge, but, like... You do. When the whole, I was gonna say, I can't believe out- you were complaining about Edge. <laughs> so okay here's the thing when when the whole album is edge it does become it it does get a little bit much (laughs) Uh, Mm. even i can admit that and like well that's where i think scrap heap despite containing a lot of edge in its own right it had it had enough like to mix it up and split it up a little bit and different tones this has different tones like the songs have all been different, all paced different, all with a different style, but I feel like the lyrics are very, very similar to a point where it's like, I am underst- like I understood what he meant in Social Envy, and I feel like I'm just been getting more of that yep. in each song, and yep. like, uh, uh, it's like, by song two, I was like, okay, I get it. But he's still going. He's really trying to He's nailed in that point. He's nailed in five nails so far, all in the same yep. hole, uh, trying to explain what he. I, is I got going a feeling through. we we got four more. <laughs> yeah, four more nails on the way, and yep, this isn't at all uh, criticism. Like 
This is all well, everything he's been. I think it, it probably respect. should be, but it is oh, like a, a, yes, a, like. like yeah, that's legitimate criticism, but again, these are yes. his personal feelings, so it's not invalidating his personal feelings, it's just, like, as an album, it could be stronger. Yes, 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 like, we, we've learned our lesson when it comes to personal feelings. Yes. We, we We're not invalidating anybody's feelings, alright? Yeah, actually, yeah, you know what, looping back to what I literally said at the start, yeah, like, I think... It is, uh, yeah, I like edgy stuff, but when there's nothing but edgy stuff, it does become a, get, a bit much for me. And I'm mm. kind of at that point, I'm like, it's a bit much, but there is a reason for it to yeah. be there. So, yeah, his will, feelings are definitely warranted, given his situation. I'll try to, that's the thing, like, this is, I'm at, like, a point where, like, I want, I have to try and think about all the songs individually and appreciate them individually rather as a whole of an album. Yep. And for something like Social Envy, I can't really do that. But for the rest of these, I can. Yes. Well, that's why I felt like To Let Go is just a perfect summary of the album itself. Like, you could have, if he didn't want to do an album, he could have just released that single. And it's mm-hmm. like, message is clear, sir. Yes. But we will see. We have four more songs to get through. Four more nails. <gasps> and I'm... Sorry. I had a moment. <laughs> oh. Oh, a double one. What? What? Sorry. Uh, no, sorry. I was just retweeting art on Twitter. Um, uh, fuck. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, cool. yeah. Anyway, I saw two of my favorite Persona girls in a row. Anyway, nice. point is, um, we're moving on. The uh, track number six is called Crawling in Circles. Um, prepare for nail number six. I'm already on the cross, nailed in. Uh, ready to got die ha- for our got, sins, and got the hammer. someone, yeah, someone is. I'm like, we're five nails in. Someone and some wise guy is like, hey, I'm gonna do another one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's like we got, we got all appendages, and we got his dick. We may as well like get him in the like the shot. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's go for it. Yeah. All right, fuck it. Um. All right, playing track number six in three, two, one. That's not what I expected. <laughs> no, no, neither. Okay, different vibe. Okay. Let's go. Are we bringing up the mood? I think we're going melancholy. Okay. Why not both? This might be bargaining. I think we're out to bargaining when it comes to five stages. Yeah, melancholy All right. is uh All right. Yeah, right. Okay. There's I mean There's yeah. one thing there's there's another criticism I have that I really do need to bring up at the end. I'm a little bit confused about something. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> A pyramid scheme? Fuck Scott Coffin? I don't... What? Is, 
He's very pretty in that, isn't he? Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that was pretty. That's what I sound like during sex. <laughs> anyway. I know, I was like, are you, are you that, bro? You're like, you're going, yeah. you're going hot, you're going hand I'm that's, going crazy, that's yeah. The, that's the music you fuck to, like, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, make, I make her depressed before I go in. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 <laughs> lower her expectations by, depre- by depressing her first and then it's just yep. like yeah small dick like yep. okay, Whoops. doesn't matter that sorry I only got matter. two inches she's small already dick, sad no, anything sad. works uh, um, that was nice that was very pretty yeah like, that was alright like like the vibe of that I, I like we were just saying hey look something different would be nice and the, I, that was something different yeah only criticism. Um, it, in this song and in the the last song of Scrap Heap, which I have just drawn a blank. It, Is it not Scrap Heap? Fuck. No, no, the last no, no, no. song. Uh, with, so, you know what uh, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, I know what you're talking about, yeah. Leave Me called. Behind. Leave Me Behind. There we go. Um, hey. So both, both in Crawling in Circles and Leave Me Behind, he has talked about, will people just forget me if I stop? Like, will people just, like... Will, will, he, he's asked that question, will you forget me? And he says something similar here, and that kind of puts me in two minds, because feeling, obviously feelings are complicated. Like, no one yep. can fully comprehend and understand their own feelings. But I'm getting the mixed messages here of, Hey, I want to be left alone and do my own thing. But then he's also like kind of upset. Like, will you forget me if I stop doing what everyone wants? Like he, so mm-hmm. he's in the two minds of like, I want to be left alone, but I don't want you to forget me. Mm. Like, it's uh, that. That's kind of like the, the interesting struggle, and I guess that kind of works with depressive feelings because he like. You want one thing, you can't get it, and then you want another thing, but that will affect other people, and it's a complicated mess. I, I yeah, I get that. It, it, it's just that's not the only time he's mentioned about people forgetting him, and I'm just questioning like that along with the rest of this album of like, fuck you, like why has this happened, like. I've wanted to do my own thing. It's not worked, and I'm at mm. this point now. And, right. But but also, don't forget me, please. Like it, it's I don't know. It's right. A bit conflicting in my head. Yeah, I I that makes sense. Um, it's the um, I I, I did like that Nate, song. Nate, I, if you're listening to this, tell me, please explain. If you're gonna re- please leave an please essay in the please, comments. Please. I'm, uh, or if you are a genuine Nate fan and don't want to flame us for what we're saying, um, yeah, please try and explain that because yeah. I'm genuinely I'm trying to figure it. I out. mean, we're not we're not being we're not being too harsh this time. I think it's probably fine. Maybe um, the, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, that was good. Again, it, I think every song on this so far has been pretty different in. Um, like different enough stylistically, uh, to to warrant the repeating themes, I think that that justifies it. Like you can get away with repeating the same sort of like, you know, de- the same sort of emo sort of themes. I don't want to say emo. It seems like I'm just you know minimizing it, but that that sort of what it, it falls into that category sort of like the the sort of the dealing with those complex feelings of like being a content creator in the modern day and having to keep up with the feeling like you have to keep up with the trends and all that nonsense. And you know, the whole, what this whole album has been about. Um, so I, I think repeating those same themes with stylistically different songs, 
like Nate has done so far. It, it warrants it. I think it's fine. Um, so, uh, like, ultimately, the repeating themes is a cri- criticism, but in the end, you can, like, you, you, you bounce off that because each song has been so different. Um, yeah. Like, the, um, but yeah, that was, that was good. Uh, I'm not, a, personally, I'm not, like, a, a massive fan of those, like, um, like, this was very, a um, very melancholic song to, like, get you in your feels a little bit. Um, but I'm not a big fan of when singers start, like, sort of singing, like, giving their, their best, like, going hard over that sort of music, um, which was what was happening here. I, I prefer, at least personally, like, I prefer the, like, songs where they keep it softer, um, but it was good, and I think it did work here, so I appreciate that, like, he, he does a good job, um, that's just a personal preference. But yeah. the uh, yeah no it, it was solid very the the vibe the melancholic vibe he went for yeah I think he really nailed it so yeah good stuff and almost in like responding to my comment from my pre from the previous song about like yeah like, there's a lot of repeating themes you know what like you're right it works because there's a different sound and a different style of song for each song yep doesn't matter that the theme's the same because no matter what people will come away from this album with a favorite and that favorite will still have that same message which is okay Mm -hmm. not every album does that like he hasn't done that i don't think for a lot of other albums maybe scrap heap was the closest one Mm -hmm. to it but yeah it, it it fits the mood of what he's going for and yeah i think it's pretty good uh, yeah. that that crawling, crawling circles was nice don't think it's up there yet but we have three more nails to go yeah so I'm all right this one the shortest song yeah so okay. this is uh track number seven is called a lesson in grief and we're gonna play it in three two one go Shadow the Hedgehog. Yeah, right? Yeah. That is kind of what that... You, you're actually <laughs> fucking right. I know, right? <laughs> Holy fuck. This is the most different song. Yet. And I, I I'm very much enjoying this. Hmm. Boom, boom, boom.
Nice. Yeah. Nice. That, that was that was solid. I think yeah, I think that was my favorite so far. Like that, almost it kind of it lent away from the vibe of the rest of the album. It still had a very poignant message, but it had a bit more mm. of that Nate vibe that I'm more accustomed to, and it kept the same pace the whole time, which is something I appreciated. That for the for the shorter song, <laughs> like. I, I felt like that's something I could have on repeat. Like that and that chorus was very catchy. Yeah. I never tried. Like and I, I, I really like that. That was good. No, yeah, that was solid. I arguably his strongest vocal performance, I think, and probably the strongest lyrics too. A lot of the lyrical work in those verses was very well done. I'm a big fan of that. Um like his word choice in there. Um, when you, when you, uh, one thing I've noticed is like when you, when you write long enough, um, like a lot of bands that I've listened to for a long time, they, they start really diversifying their word choice. And I'm like, wow, I never would have thought to use like that expression or that term in a song. Um, so a lot of the word choice in that one was really solid. I felt, and just, like you said, since the vibe kept like the uh, the the pacing and the the vibe kept up the whole time, like he was always pushing, he was always on like I, I want to say it's a weird way to put it, but he was always like g- on the offensive with his vocals, like he was just constantly going hard, and because of that, this one it, it felt like it felt the vocal performance felt really strong and I could actually feel like some of the emotion in what he was saying. So very good stuff. That was very strong. Mm. Awesome. Um, yeah, good shit. Um, so now, well, now remember, the, remember what I was saying before about how two of his songs had the conflicting message of like wanting to be forgotten. Um, Look, I honestly didn't realize this song was called Forgotten. So uh, I think nice. I think I'm gonna get a very clear answer now uh, with this. Yeah, scratch the essay. Don't we don't we don't need it. Yeah, um, I'm about to get an essay, bro. A four minute essay. Yep. Real. Uh, okay. So yeah, track number eight's Forgotten. We're gonna play it in three, two, one, go. Someone loaded up the YouTube chill step mix. Shit, you're right. <laughs> oh. We. We. Us. The collective. Not. Yes. This is the more hopeful song. I appreciate that. Yes. I Mm. like this a lot. And the vibe immediately, I'm getting like... I'm getting a very good vibe from this. It's, I, I need to make a comparison later, but yeah. For real.
Oh. Damn. Oh. Well. Now that makes sense, doesn't it? I put the pieces together in my head. I feel like an idiot. Whoa, key change. Yo. Yeah, Holy. let's go. Let's go. Everyone cheering in the crowd. Yeah, literally. Nice. Well, that was nice, wasn't it? That was cool. Now, okay, do, yeah. do me a favor. Explain, what did you put together at the end there? Oh, um, y weren't you, like, there was a ton of like sprinkled throughout of references or I don't know if they were actual references, but um, they were at least the same like words as lyrics from songs from Sonic Frontiers. Yes. And yeah. towards the end. Undefeatable, um, never let your flame uh, die out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nah. So, and I, it, and I was like, why is this happening? And then I was like, oh, he was in Sonic Frontiers. He did One Way Dream, and I forgot about that. Um, mm -hmm. So that's probably sort of... I imagine the song is at least partially connected to that experience. Um, like getting, you know, he was also in the... Uh, I forget which concert it was, but he sung Endless Possibility the in an official the Sega. Live symphony. Yeah, the symphony or whatever. Um, so he's been in, he's been in the, with Sega, at least for a little while. Um, but you know, getting that call to be like in the game for real in like an, like one of, you know, the biggest Sonic release in years. Um, that's, that's huge. And that's like, I think at least this song is partially inspired by like just a heroic sort of thing like that, that Sonic's always been. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, something like that. I, I agree. But I, I did really like that. That was good stuff. Um, the the way it very, like you said, it was very hopeful feeling. The way the um, um, the the way the course was put together, where he starts like the first bits, uh, like the first two bits are like he's holding those notes for a while, and they're a bit slower, and then he moves into like some faster bits in the third part, and then for the fourth part he repeats. Very standard uh, chorus structure, but it works. Um, and yeah, like the you could just feel like the hopefulness on that one. Mm -hmm. but, uh, that was that was nice. Yeah, see, very nice song. I, I agree. This is most definitely like partially inspired by that experience and being able to be a part of Sonic in a very unique way now, and like. That is definitely added, that that will definitely add credence to the idea that he will not be forgotten because he's in something that's so big and that, like, yeah so that iconic. people are going to love for a long time. Yes. Yep. Um, but the, <laughs> when, when it was when it was very hopeful, and then I like looked at the names of the songs, and then I realized, oh, okay, I I, I get I get it now. He's played the long game this entire album. First yep. seven songs are all about the crushing feeling that he's been having for years, all expressed in different ways that honor the styles that he has mastered throughout the years of making music. And Forgotten is the turnaround point of just, like, feeling hopeful once again that things are going to get better and he will not be forgotten and, like, the experience culminating in all the experiences he's had and now let the floodgates open is a really good name for the next phase of his existence of his life of his career because i'm assuming with that name with the floodgates open we're gonna see a lot but mm. i could easily be disproven with lyrics so we'll listen but yeah. I feel like uh, as soon as like it was a more hopeful song, I was like, 
That motherfucker's played the long game with me. He's made me feel yeah. edgy and depressed for seven songs just to turn it around. That fuck. <laughs> but that that was that, the bastard. That was good. That was very hopeful. I had like it had that because it, it reminded me of like like uh, like what like a, a a movie that. Like, where just constantly things have happened to push people down the entire time. And, like, it seems like it's a really low, depressing moment where it's just like, nothing could be better. And then there's just that one spark of hope where it's just like, finally something's turning around. And that's, like, that's what that song made me think of. Like, mm-hmm. I, I have a really poor comparison in my head, but I'm, I, I don't, I feel too embarrassed to say it, so I'm not going to. Um... But regardless of that, we're on to the final song. Yeah, we are. Track nine. All right. Yep. The final song, track number nine, Let the Floodgates Open. Um, let's jump into it. We're going to play the last one in three, two, one, go. Oh. They invited in Green Day. Oh, Whoa. that's an interesting sound. Oh. Wow. Shit. Mm. Huh. Ooh. Very, very pretty. Very pretty lyrics. Yeah. Cope. Oh, those harmonies are nice. His his, hit different. Damn. 
dude, that wow! Like you, you right, those harmonies and that like that's that very subtle like bass. I want to say I might be completely wrong, but that very subtle mm. like song, like, the quietness of that at the end and the harmonies were. It made something very, very like that. That hit hard to me. Like, damn, son. Mm. Wow. Um, interesting instrumental. It, when I op- window just crashed. Ignore that. Um, nice. When it started, I was very. I was questioning the instrumental a bit because it was an interesting mixture of noises. Um, I got used to it by the midway point. Um, Mm -hmm. And yeah, that, it had a lot of references, like, I wasn't expecting the, the, like, the, you're the star and shining bright, you're, I know you're not far, like, I feel like, in my mind, it's like, now it's saying, has this whole album been a thing of like, to all, everyone that just demands one thing from me, fuck you. But to the rest of you that are genuinely caring and have been with me from the start and care about the things I do and make, thank you. Mm. And I hope you stick around for what comes next, because he did say start yeah. again. So I, I feel like that that was an understanding message. And yeah, it was very emotional. That was, that was nice. Yeah. The... Uh, the- yeah, the the take my hand and take my heart line makes me think of, you know, it being about a woman specifically. But even if it's not, the you're right. It was a very pretty song, uh, and the again the lyrics were nice here. Um, the very strong vocal performance. Uh, I like this. You mentioned how the sound was interesting. Like I don't. I can't think of another song I've heard that sounds like that. No. It's very, very unique feeling. Uh, so what I appreciate what you put together there. Um, and very uplifting feeling at the end there. Um, but yet still somehow almost melancholic with that like final sequence of it, you know, all uh, quiet and the harmonies going with the sparse, uh, soft vocals very nice composition as well so yeah i mean overall like we we got thrown for a loop at the end but even like the one the songs that all had similar themes they were all solid like there wasn't a bad song on this album for sure yeah like, like at most for were... sure envy was kind of like I don't even count that one. Yeah, like, see, like, that, it's, that didn't feel like a song. It felt like, yeah, you're, you're right, it felt like a, yeah, an album intro, but it wasn't a song. E- like, what are those, yeah, those interviews um, you see sometimes in rap albums? Yes. So, but yeah, like, there was there was not a bad song on here. Each one was unique and different. Um, it, it's It was surprising, like, how different... Like, one of the things... Uh, if you'll allow me to toot my own horn for a second, one of the things I was proud of in Turn to Ash was that every song felt a little unique and different. This took that to another level, right? Because this is this is on a completely different level because each song stylistically is, like, so unique from each other. Like, the, none of them are the same. Like, in my album, all of them use... Each song used the same elements like the same core elements to put together a different f- style song but this like the elements were constantly changing and even the feeling like how the guitars were put together and amped up and mixed was changing with every song like it, it was very very surprising like the seeing each like actually in quick succession seeing each of the different styles that Nate has been able to write and actually do extremely well with so it's it's surprising that one man could be so versatile so i appreciate that about this um uh it is worth mentioning that i think the first what seven tracks where he repeats the same themes it it hurts a little to listen to that all in a row but probably each one on their own 
not is you won't feel that. Yeah. But you know, I, as an album, it's it's worth um it's worth mentioning. But other than that, like I've I do appreciate also that like the last two felt so hopeful and uplifting um in comparison not even in comparison just overall but even like compared to the first the first the bulk of the album it's a nice change so and i think it just kind of shows it almost feels like it shows that the progression i hope that nate's gone through in recent times where he was so you know locked in that depressing feeling of having to slave away and do what you don't want to do, do things that you don't want to do creatively for, you know, some superficial satisfaction. Um, but he was snapped out of it and has hope for the, for his, the future of his career again. Mm -hmm. So that, I, I hope that's how it is. Um, that's what I took away from it. And I hope that's how it is in reality as well. Um, but yeah, very strong album. Uh, I, I don't know if I like it as much as Nate's other original albums, but, the diversity on this one speaks for itself, um, and yeah, yeah, it, uh, very, I, very strong. I definitely I thought. agree with the idea that like it, all, all the songs were unique, and you're right. Like listening to them all in a row definitely gives you that downward feeling, and it, is a bit of, it does hurt. Well, and it just gets repetitive too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Um, but uh, you wouldn't have that problem if you just picked out one yeah, randomly. Exactly. Um, yeah, you're right. I, I, I feel like the elements of Sandcastle Kingdoms and Pen Exposure were very, very unique and are still very, very unique. Whereas, like, mm. because of the samey feeling I got from the, this album, it's not as good as the other two, in my own opinion. Mm. But still incredibly strong and a very good poignant message to be told, and a very good, almost story of life in a way. Like you, you can't, it, 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 I can't imagine to what it's like to be in his position because, yeah, I un I understand the feeling of working in a job that you don't want to do. But you have to do it because you need to do that to survive, to make money, to live life. But in a different way, whereas, like, compared to what Nate's probably feeling, which I can imagine a lot of other people have felt, where mm -hmm. you start off doing something creatively, it becomes successful, and you're so happy that this thing you love doing has become successful. But then you get pigeonholed into only doing a few select things that become nauseating, frustrating, and anger-inducing for you because that's all people want now. But you have so many ideas and so many other things you want to do, and you're in this so and you're in this position. You're just stuck in this position where you're like, I can't. I know I can do the things I love, but you're not letting me. You like, and whether you're being like that person being YouTube or the audience, like I can understand how after years you start to lose passion for the things you love because you're pigeonholed and you're stuck. And it sounds like from this album, from different things he said in live streams, and like I remember the announcement video for this album, and I think for Scrap Heap as well, he said he doesn't know how much longer he'll be making things as Nate wants to battle. And I feel like this right. album was kind of the answer of like what everything he's been feeling for years. And it makes a lot of sense because yeah, it, it's such a different comparison of, I love this. Hey, I don't love this now because of the things you're making me do, but then being able to move past that and still be in love with something with, something like music like yeah it, it's very very good um and I, I i'm really happy for nate and i'm really happy i found nate's music because he's become one of my favorite artists um like i swear for like three or four years in a row he's been in my top one of my top played musicians um mm -hmm. well in, what do you think are your 
three favorites from this album? Um, let's see. I think. Mm, I think "Forgotten," "Ghost Town," and "To Let Go" are my three favorites. Okay. I think "A Lesson in Grief," "To Let Go," and "Forgotten" are my favorites, but. Uh, see, I've come to realize with some of the previous albums re- we've reviewed, there's always another, like, the fourth option in my head is always the one that ends up becoming my favorite. It's so mm-hmm. weird. So I feel like, yeah, A Lesson in Grief, To Let Go and Forgotten are my favorites right now. But I feel like if I put Let the Floodgates Open on repeat a few times, that will slowly become my favorite. That's, mm. yeah. Like, everything's really That's good. That's a good like, one as well. Yeah. Like, no, it is. Viral was so like broke up the pace that much that it's kind of hard to vibe with it exactly in my head like it's a good song but like i can't imagine listening to that in the car and singing it but that's a lot of the time where i get like, right same social envy um without a cure fuck i honestly i don't even remember without a cure now because everything else took me for such a different ride i need to listen yeah. to it again but um yeah, I'm I'm happy with this, and I said this at the end of the Nate FNAF music tier list I did with my other friends. Um, no matter what Nate intends to do in the future, I will be supporting it, because he's, he's been mm. a creator that's been working at his craft for that long, and he makes such good music. And I, even just things like some of his live streams, I've enjoyed the content he produces. He's, I think he's a really funny guy. Um, and yeah, no matter what he chooses to do, I, I will be a fan. So uh, unless he yeah. supports Nazis, I guess that's the, one of the few things would well, probably turn me against him. But Hopefully, um, yeah. I, I hopefully it doesn't I, come to that. I don't imagine he's a secret Nazi sympathizer. But um, yeah. No, I mean, I've been a fan going on 10 years now. I I think nine years it's been. Um, so I it's... Uh, admittedly, I've gotten out of a lot of his content recently, but like 2017, 2016, especially like Songs of Time, I think is when it peaked for me. Um, my my fa- being a fan, they wants to battle. Like I listened, I was con- watching Nate and Dookie. I was watching those like Nuzlocks he was doing. I, I am a fan. Like he he's... A, seems like a great guy and i i do wish him the best and i'll I, if he does do any music down the road especially original stuff i want to hear it so because it feels like he's gonna be on the up and up going forward so uh good stuff um i feel like he uh, never mind i was about to say <laughs> uh, i was about to say i think he commented something mean about me on the on the yeah, infamous no, TikTok, but yeah, I, yeah, on the we uh, can leave uh, that. That's in the past, all right. Yeah, we can yeah. Leave that in, in the past. No, no, the no. He, 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 he didn't say something mean about you. He just said, "Oh, he sounds bad." Cry laugh emoji. Yeah, was like I? It, it was something. I like didn't that. remember. It, 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 it wasn't anything specifically about either yeah. of us. So okay. yeah, uh, Nate. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you're gonna pay att- any attention to this, and that's fair if you don't. He, no, I, I was honestly genuinely surprised he even commented on one of our reviews. That was yeah freaky. And then yeah, then he commented on the TikToks. Well, that was a thing as well. I thought that was funny. But um, yeah, yeah doesn't matter. Well yeah. done. This was a terrific album. Uh, and I am very keen for whatever comes next, whether it is as yep. now wants the battle or otherwise. So, um, and I don't know who needs to hear this, but I will not be doing instrumental covers of these. Thanks very much. Um, I'm do going you, home. Do you still get people <laughs> asking for names? No. <laughs> no. Fuck. I was going to say, Christ, it's been years. Fuck you. No, no, on. no. Wow. Anyway, Nate, if you're listening, I covered 30 of your songs. Sorry about that. Um, I used, but now he offers I used, the instrumentals on he bro, offers the instrumentals on Patreon and shit. So I it's fine. used to enjoy the show instrumental for like all my Tekken videos for a while, and like, bro, nice. I wish I, I wish I did. It was, <laughs> 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 I, I don't know, that was so weird. 
Oh, fuck. Uh, yeah, no, uh, it, it, it's cool that he's released the instrumentals for his own stuff on the Give Heart yeah. Records site. Um, yeah, bro, literally, I'm looking I at Nam- Namus to Battle on Spotify right now. Like songs. You've liked 248 songs. Jesus Christ. Jesus. That's, I think that is more than any other artist right now. Fuck. I think that's more than any other artist even has. <laughs> Shit. I don't even think many other artists even release 246 songs, period. That, that's a testament, <laughs> I guess. The testament to Nate's fucking yeah. work ethic. Like, man's been making music for fucking yonks, bro. Surely there's, like, two copies of it. No, see, the compilation album, The Critical Hits, is in there. That's why. There's a few copies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a few copies. Doesn't matter. Anyway, that is it for the album review, boys and girls, ladies and gents, and everything in between. Mm. We hope you guys had a good time, and uh, share your thoughts about the album down below. And, um, yeah, we got another album review coming up soon. Uh, yes. Red, the Red Album. That'll be cool. Yeah. Um, After my Nate Wants to Battle phase in, like, 2016, 2017 was my Red phase. So I'm going into, like, <laughs> back-to-back teenage music phases. Let's go. Fuck yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, do all the classic stuff, you know, like, subscribe, follow us on the medias and the social medias, and, yeah, everything, you know, what's up. And um, thank you very much, Nate, for making this music. We're big fans. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, thank you for listening. Have a good one guys bye bye bye